What is going on my beautiful LARPers and LARPettes? Do you want to become John Wick but don't have the John Wick coin? Are you too poor to afford one of these cool John Wick 2011s? Well, I have the answer for you. The brand new TTI Canic Collaboration the TTI Combat. Now this gun is very exciting because it had a lot of hype around SHOT Show and I was very interested now being a somewhat new Canic lover, I guess. I'm gonna go over all the features from the front to the back and what you're getting in the box. I'm gonna pull up the box in a second right now, but before I get into all the features that you're getting with this TTI Combat here, uh, my relationship with Canic. Full disclosure, Canic has sent me firearms in the past. Uh, they sent me the Rivals. Uh, that's kind of what turned me on to Canic guns in general. I wasn't a huge fan in the past with the older Canics. Once I got a Rival in my hands, I absolutely fell in love with them. And I'll go over some of the features on why I fell in love with uh, certain Canics here. But they did send this one out for me or to me for free for review. They did not pay me for this review. Now, normally when it comes to my reviews, I kind of just skip over the box that it comes in or the case that it comes in because there's really not a whole lot going on with certain guns, even though sometimes they're upwards of several grand for a certain gun and it just kind of just comes with a couple magazines and maybe some extra fibers and a lock and a tool. Nothing too crazy in those uh, boxes. So with Canix, I always like to do a good old uh, overview or a look at what you're getting in the box because, ow! With Canic guns, you're always getting a buttload of stuff, accessories and whatnot in the actual box itself. And they did not skimp out when it came to the uh, TTI combat here. So let's go over what you're getting in the box. So you get a flush fit magazine in the box or in the gun here. You get a magazine with an aluminum extension and this is a plus three base pad here. You also get your normal little I say normal because these come in all the Canic uh, boxes here. This is actually your tool kit. It comes with your tools, it comes with extra fibers, it comes with, it normally comes with extra um, magazine releases, but I'll get into that later on in the video. You get three optic plates, but two of them are plastic. The third one, which I'm guessing is for the optic that this one comes with. With the optic, this one comes with their new, uh, I believe they say mechanic or mechanic. I don't know. I want to say mechanic because that's how it sounds. But this is their MO3 one here. Very, very big window on this guy here. It's similar to an SRO. But I don't, I, I looked on their website and it doesn't really mention that it comes with that optic in here. This one did come with an optic though, so when it comes to companies sending out guns to YouTubers or whatever, they'll kind of give them the full package deal, but sometimes the one that you pick up does not have all the whistle, bells and whistles that it comes with. So I can almost guarantee you, you're gonna get everything else in this box aside from the optic. I'm not sure about that, so don't take my word for it. You get three back straps, one on the gun and two inside the case. You'll probably get a medium large or, or a small medium large. Um, ugh, this freaking case is trying to take my finger out. So that's at the front here. So let me go ahead and take this uh, top foam out that has the gun in it. And you also get a bunch of goodies on the bottom. So you get your cleaning kit. You get a couple of tools here to make your uh, adjustments to your optic or um, there's a tool in here that I'll get into later on that has to do with the compensator. You get a magazine loader. You get a uh, really cool holster here that's kind of half that uh, Terran tactical iconic slide cuts there that are also on the Canic themselves. A lot of people are probably gonna go nuts over this. Uh, a challenge coin that is uh, gold looking here. Kind of paying homage to, uh, I guess, John Wick with their coins here, but really, really cool that you're getting this here. And lastly, you're getting a reduced power recoil spring. This is important because when you put compensators on guns, 
it's sometimes it depends on the ammo on what you're shooting and you might have issues with cycling so they do give you an extra spring in there to tune your gun to the ammo you're shooting now let's get into the features of the firearm itself so starting here at the front you're getting a spiral fluted barrel this gun is chambered in nine mil uh, and you're getting a compensator that is attached to this barrel. But the way that it attaches to the barrel is not by threading on. So with your slide off and the spring out, you just push that barrel a little bit forward, get your tool that is supplied in the box, push that little dimple right at the front here. Hopefully I can get you a better picture of that, but push that down, twist, and you could just pull that guy right off. That barrel is ported right at the front there, but it is not threaded. It's like a quick detach system here. So once you want to put it back on, you just put it down and twist and you're good to go again. So that's a very cool way of doing a compensator barrel combo there. Um, very similar to like the Radian Ramjet is what I'm uh, kind of getting the vibe from here. I do hope that they offer this as a uh, aftermarket option for other Canics because this is essentially a TP9 Elite or whatever size. I don't, I'm not too familiar with all the Canics out there. I feel like you can just directly uh, just get the barrel and that compensator and drop it into the canic that's the same size as this. Um, cool for those of you that are in band states where they don't allow threaded barrels, so you can get one of these and have a compensated gun where you can have that quick detach compensator. Also, this compensator does help me with reducing some of that muzzle flip whenever I'm shooting. Again, when it comes to compensators, I'm always on the fence about them just because I feel with proper fundamentals, you could always get that gun to shoot super flat, but you can definitely tell a difference in that feel when you have a compensator at the end of a gun. When you're shooting at a uh, higher rates of fire, I guess, when your split times are getting a little bit spicier, you can definitely feel that gun keeping a little bit more flat with a compensator on there as opposed to not having a compensator on there. Now moving on, you get a fiber optic front. Terran likes going with green all the time when it comes to all of his firearms for some reason. Uh, maybe he could see it a little bit better, but this one does have a bright green fiber optic up front and a blacked out rear here. And as far as optics, you do have a option of putting that mechanic mechanic optic on there then sro basically any optic out there it does uh it is compatible with this guy here and the cool thing about this as well with that optic cut is you do have uh your sights still on there when you put an optic on there. There are some canics out there like this rival where you take that rear plate off, but it also takes off your rear sight where once you put an optic on there, you don't have basically a rear sight to co-witness, but this one's uh, cool that they kept that option. Now moving on to the actual serrations, the milling on this gun. Terran always has his iconic uh, combat cuts, I guess that's what you call them. Combat carry, combat uh, master, combat anything. This is his uh, iconic cuts that you see here. You'll see them on the sand viper that you see here, the pit viper, the combat master right here. This is an airsoft, but I have my real one getting some work done to it right now, so stay tuned for that. But doing those cuts on the Canic really sets this thing off. It looks super aggressive super cool you get lightning cuts right here on the right on the left and at the top there to reduce that uh, slide weight you get the cuts that are super aggressive where I can uh, I don't have any slippage issues whatsoever there and if you go down to the slide release slide stop he did also integrate those cuts into the slide stop there which I think is a really cool touch now moving on down to the frame i'm going to compare it to the rival because i think this is uh one of the closest resemblance that you can get here for the actual comparison itself but the rival when it comes to the frame it feels i don't know i feel like this rival might be a tad thicker but that might just be me but the grip itself is a lot more aggressive than the rival the rival it's not too aggressive. It's actually a little bit too slippery for my taste, but on the Canic TTI Combat, it is extremely, extremely aggressive. So much so where I was having a death grip on this thing and I was kind of uh, 
uh, rubbing my hand raw. I did uh, shoot a uh, good amount through this. I'll get into that later as well. But uh, super aggressive grip and super ergonomic. You do get a small little double undercut right here, a uh, accessory rail, and all that good stuff that you get with a frame. You do get the same takedown lever. This one is just bronze compared to the black one here on the Rival. Um, other than that, you do get your little uh, texturing right here at the front where you can rest your thumb on. And that's as far as the actual plastic frame itself, that's pretty much it. Now moving on down to my favorite feature is the trigger. This is the same exact trigger that you're getting on all the Rival models here. This is probably my favorite feature on Canics in general. When they have this trigger in there, that is a uh, phenomenal trigger to have in these striker fired guns. Probably my most favorite striker fired trigger aside from the Walther PDP or the PPQ match with one of their pro triggers. I forgot the name of it, but very similar to this one, but not taken away from this one. This one is very, very nice. It is extremely short pull and a very short reset as well. Super fast splits on this trigger. I did not have any trigger freeze whatsoever. I usually get trigger freeze sometimes when I'm uh, shooting a gun too fast for my own good, but this one I did not have any uh, issues with shooting. And Taryn also added his uh, little tiny logo right there on the trigger itself. Now moving on down to the mag release. Now this is one of those things where I was not really too fond of. And this is more of a me issue than a gun issue. There's nothing mechanically wrong with this mag magazine release whatsoever. It is very nicely textured. It is ambidextrous. You can swap that around to the other side. Nothing wrong with that for this gun. But for me, the way I grip the gun, I don't know what I was doing where I was just constantly just accidentally releasing that uh, magazine every time I was gripping it and shooting it. And I was trying to kind of adjust my grip a little bit, but I just kept pressing that on accident. And I can tell I was uh, kind of driving into that mag release just because the inside of my palm here was getting a little raw and um, almost to the point where it was blistering up. So there's between me and this uh, mag release here, we are not really compatible. I wish I can swap it out for a shorter uh, mag release. And that brings me to my next point. You can't switch this out like you could on the Rival. So on the Rival, if you look right here, you get a little screw where you can kind of just take that off and swap it out for a longer one, a medium one, a small one, or you can just not have anything on there, I guess, if you want. I don't know. But you do have the option of swapping out for different mag releases or different length mag releases. And I don't have that issue with this one here. I think though with a little bit of practice, I could just get over that issue. But I just, can it kind of spoiled me with having a lot of different options that I can swap out for certain issues. And this one did not have that. So a little sad about that. Now moving on down to the magwell. This is an aluminum magwell that's basically identical to the magwell that you're getting on the rival here. And you get your little Terran tactical logo right there. Extremely easy to do reloads with that magwell. That about does it for the Canic TTI combat features here. I think it's a very, very cool gun. I always said that the Rival was my favorite Canic, but I think that just got pushed out of the way by the new Canic TTI Combat. Also, I did shoot 850 rounds to this thing, and I had two issues. So the first issue was that magazine issue, which is mostly a me issue. So I'm not really going to dock that on this uh, TTI combat here. The second issue was I had one failure to extract or a stove pipe, right? Again, I think that had to do with me because it didn't have any issues whatsoever throughout all the testing that I did aside from me inducing that magazine um, problem there. And with me adjusting my grip around that, I kind of think I went a little higher, maybe too high where I was riding that gun to uh, slow that slide down where it didn't um, fully eject that round and I had a stovepipe. Do I think it really had issues? 
I don't think so. I think really it was just my fault that uh, all that was happening there. But once I kind of got the hang of it and adjusted around that magazine release, it was all good from there. So 850 rounds. But what do you think about the new TTI Combat? Are you gonna get your hands on one? They're coming right around $1,000, I think like 950 or something like that, which I think is absolutely uh, bonkers when it comes to a Terran tactical gun, right? So every Terran tactical gun that I've seen or I've owned, like I bought this Sand Viper here and it's already, I think I've seen them sell for like 10 grand and I only bought it for seven grand. Then I have the uh, Combat Master, not this one here, this is the Airsoft, but the Combat Master is also, I think I paid like five grand or something like that for it way back in the day and it's they're up a lot just because of the john wick movies now when it comes to this one here this one has not been featured in any movies or any shows yet but i could almost guarantee you that once this one hits a pretty big movie maybe a new john wick a john wick spin-off movie uh some other movie that comes out there's terran tactical guns all throughout Hollywood, you guys know that. Once this one hits the big screen, I think it's gonna get even harder to find. And that's kind of why I like going with some of Terran's guns, just because it's more of that collector's item piece, right? So the Sand Viper, the Combat Master, I like those guns just because they're collector's items to me. Yeah, I do shoot them from time to time, but I see that they hold their value and I really appreciate them holding their value. And I think with this Canik, if you pick one up, the more difficult they get, the more they're gonna go up in price. I could almost guarantee you that people are gonna buy these and put them on Gunbroker and try to sell them for a profit. I think that's where people start to screw everybody over is when they buy these purposely to fit, flip them. I think they should give all of us a chance to purchase one of these and then once they hit the big screen, that's when you can make your profit, right? Don't start price gouging stuff just because uh, it has the Terran name on it. Uh, essentially, it's just a prettier dressed up TP9 Elite is what I'm guessing. But thank you guys so much for hearing me ramble on about this mechanic here. And I really appreciate you all. Love you all. Catch you in the next one.